good morning today in this class we will be discussing an important category of igneous rocks that is the lamprophires the term lamprophire is applied to a group of melanocratic dike you all know that igneous rocks on the basis of dark minerals they are categorized into four categories leucocratic mesocratic melanocratic and hypermelanic now when these terms are used melanocratic dike means melanocratic means when the mafic minerals or the dark minerals they are from 60 to 90 percent that are the melanocratic so these lamprophires are your melanocratic dikes means these rocks contain 60 to 90 percent your mafic minerals in addition to it irrespective of nature of ignition minerals of which they are largely consist the crystals in lamprophires are generally uhedral in shape that is very important means they have the uhedral shape means all the faces of the crystals in lamprophires are well developed and hence they produce pandeomorphic texture so this is very interesting and very you can see the characteristic that the lamprophires they have the pandeomorphic texture once again i repeat pandeomorphic texture means the grains are of equal size and the shape of the crystals is the uhedral so if a rock has pandeomorphic texture means the grains are of equal size and the crystals are of uhedral shape and overall the rock has 60 to 90% your mafic minerals means that rock is your lamprophire also lamprophires are strongly porphyritic with the abundance of phenocrist of biotite hornblende augite olivine the phenocrist are set in ground mass of felsic plagioclase so this is the typical mineralogy of your lamprophires means the dominance is of the ferromagnesian minerals now the classification of the your this your map with your lamprophires you can see on the diagram in this table right so the if the mafic mineral is your that is the dominant is your biotite right right then the mafic mineral dominant can be hornblende or your alkali pyroxene or amphibole accordingly if the orthoclase that dominant rock the term is the m i n e t t minite similarly if it is hornblende the term is your augeite and orthoclase dominant and alkali feldspar alkali pyroxene or amphibole that will be soda mint then the next category when if the felsic component is your plagioclase predominant and the mafic component is crescentite that will be your crescentite similarly hornblende and plagioclase that is spercetite the name is spercetite next is your comptonite that is this comptonite is alkali pyroxene or amphibole with pla dominant plagioclase now this overall this is the you can say the classification that i have given in the tabular form you can name depending upon the actual mafic mineral and your you can say the feldspar nature ortho predominant or plagioclase predominant the various lamprophires they have named and they are classified so in this table you can see the various names of your lamprophires this is minite augeite soda minite crescentite spessartite comptonite this is typical on the basis of the mineralogy means the nature of your felsic and your mafic minerals now chemically lamprophires are basic to ultra basic rocks which have high content of biotite 
or you can say high content of both Na2 and K2O and FeO plus MgO. So this is the typical chemical character of lamprophires that chemically lamprophires are basic to ultra basic rocks which have high content of both Na2O plus K2O and FeO plus MgO. Lamprophire magma usually contain high concentration of water, other volatiles, Cl2, P25 etc. Naturally, once we say the texture is the uhydral, that it means that the fluidity of the liquid from which these lamprophires crystallize that is high. Naturally, as you all we have discussed in earlier our videos, that there are four factors that determine the texture of igneous rocks. That is rate of cooling, viscosity of the magma, number of component and concentration of residual component. So in that way, if you say lamprophires, because the lamprophires as far as their typical that they have the ferromagnesium mineral or FMG mineral from 60 to 90 percent. Second is they have panidiomorphic texture. Once again, I explained panidiomorphic texture means the grains are of equal side and are of uhydral shape. So naturally, the grains, if they are of uhydral shape, naturally they have crystallized from less viscous parent liquid. Once we say they are less viscous parent liquid, means they are liquid at high fluidity and we all know that that fluidity depends upon the SiO2 content, means that liquid had less content of the SiO2. Right? So this is in general the nature of this is this. Now various names, say for example dolerite. Dolerite meaning descriptive rock was given term by Haley and certain dark heavy crystalline igneous or doubtful mineralogical character. It is now denote the hyperbasal form of gabbroy, exoxide, theralite, texturite and basaltic magmas. Dolerite in the strict sense means a rock composed of labradorite, augite and iron oxides, the characteristic texture of being of a tick. The composition corresponds to that of the normal gabbro. The addition of olivine or hypersthene producing olivine dolerite or hypersthene dolerite giving rocks ranging the olivine gabbro and norite. Now the various, this is that the textural terms that are used. Now this is basically, uh, you can say the, once we say the lamprophires, they are the dike rocks. That means, once again I repeat, they are dike rocks. They have mafic mineral content from 60 to 90 percent. They have peridiomorphic texture, meaning the grains are of equal size and are of uter shape. So such igneous rocks, which have these four typical characters, they are categorized in the category of lamprophiles. That's all for today. Thank you very much. See you in the next.